But shocking figures today reveal that a mobile phone is stolen every six minutes in cities like London. And this comes as online neighbourhood apps are being flooded with reports of thefts and break-ins. So, does hearing things like this make you more fearful that you're going to be a victim of a crime? Um, I don't live my life in, in fear, but it has certainly made me more mindful. I was very lax at leaving my bag beside my chair open, carrying it around like that now. I... I always have it zipped up. I had to get the... I couldn't get a black cab. Tried to get a black cab in London late at night now, impossible. But anyway, I got the... That's um, another topic, Deb. That is another topic, Anna. <laughs> but you know how I like to digress. But anyway, I was, on the, I was on the tube and I was just very aware. There was no threatening behaviour or anything. I was just very aware that I had my mm. phone in my hand and I immediately put it in my bag. And I just think, unfortunately, as we are becoming more lawless, that people are committing crimes more because there is absolutely... Um, th there are no consequences no. in many cases. <clears throat> My son recently had his car broken into and <clears throat> he sent me a video of the scratch down the side and I thought, oh, God. And then he opened the car door on the video and the whole car was a carcass. The steering wheel column, everything had come out and this was apparently done at 7 o'clock at night um, two guys, you know, and, and, and people, A, wouldn't do anything, but B, they just think it's two guys working yeah. in the car. So the best they can get is the money for what they've stolen out of quite a nice car. The worst is a wrap on the knuckles. Mm. So, so I, I just I don't just... think there's any deterrent. No, I just had the same thing happen to me. My, my car was broken into, um, but they didn't go for the carcass of the car. They went for my blue badge, deliberately. So... It's been so inconvenient, but, but like you say, you wonder, what are the consequences? I mean, for me, it's been really frustrating because I haven't been able to use my car, I can't park without it. But I think there's a, an element of sort of... You think they're just going to kind of get away with it, there's not going to be any consequences to it. And it's, yeah, it's really frustrating. And I, I think going back to what we're talking about, whether you feel ultimately now that nowadays with the rise in crime, do you feel more, more fearful? I certainly think I've become more aware and more vigilant, and especially now my car's been broken into. But it's do you just think like as well, though, that's because we're watching it all the time, like everything's filmed yeah. now, so you see it day in, day out, and you think the whole world is... And it's discussed it. yeah. endlessly on social media, yeah. like you told me earlier, Sophie, that you're on a WhatsApp group yeah. uh, with people where you live, so everybody's kind of talking about it. Um, certainly... Statistically, uh, there are more crimes uh, recorded by the police than ever before. There were 6.3 million uh, recorded in England and Wales in 21-22, which is the highest figure in 20 years. And, of course, the number of offences that lead to someone being charged has gone so drop so much, mm. it's only 5.6% uh, of all those offences. 5.6% outrageous. end up with someone being charged or issued with a summons. So, yeah, I can see why people feel it's all hopeless yeah. going to the police, because the clear-up rate or the reporting rate is so low. Mm. But speaking as someone who was born in London, grew up in London, travelled on public transport, you know, for half a century in London or more, I... I don't feel that sense of fear, but then I've got this ingrained thing of being sensible. So if I travel, uh, I walk with my handbag slung across my body under my coat. If I go on the underground, I don't wear my jewellery. Uh, I and because you live here, that's become second nature to yeah, you Yeah, but I don't actually like look on people as potential threats, no. but I am aware of them. Mm. But the, uh, the um, statue of phones and, and wristwatches that I have uh, witnessed near me have been... People on bikes, mm. cycling while on the phone, people walking down the street on the phone, holding well, it out in front of them. I've got a, a, a reply from the police. They told us it's important that victims and witnesses contact the police as soon as a robbery occurs. The first hour after a robbery takes place or the golden hour is critical to catch the robbers. It's all very mm. well catching them, but there's, yeah. there's not really great. Now, here's another one. This scared me today. Imagine getting a phone call with a message like this. Hello there, this is Denise Welch here and I've left my bank card at home. Could you please transfer me 10 grand so I can put a deposit down on a new car? <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> well, that actually isn't Denise. That's an artificial intelligence gene-rated voice clone. Something criminals are now using to scam people out of thousands pretending to be a loved one, often calling elderly parents or grandparents pretending to be their child in need. 
I mean, that is scary, isn't it? I mean, it? that this whole thing, I'm glad we're doing this topic, absolutely terrifies me. I mean, yes, that was a bit posher than me, I'll have to say. <laughs> but the actual intonation of my voice is exactly the same. And not only are people using it for scams, they can now put words into our mouths. So there's a podcast by a very famous podcaster, it's just gone online, where his voice and his guest's voice have been cloned by this A1, and you would absolutely think that those people are talking so they could put any words into any of our mouths and say anything online and destroy and your I, life and destroy your life and especially mm. those of us with, with kids dealing with social media and everything it's absolutely terrifying but i know that when my dad was alive bless him if he'd got that phone call mm. he would have been terrified and tried to tried Transfer. to do that because it was so difficult with people in the older generation to get them to realize that there were so many incredibly clever scams mm. and that does that voice does sound as i say well like we've we've we did virtue. that one with yours but we've we've tried it with yours as well sophie so let's hear yours hello there this is sophie morgan here and i've left my bank card at home could you please transfer me 10 grand so i can put a deposit down on a new car wow wow Oh, that's really creepy. And they've just done that here. Our producers have done this. Our, our people here have done it, yeah. This is this is mine. Oh, this Hello mine. there, this is Colleen Nolan here and I've left my bank card at home. Could you please transfer me 10 grand so I can put a deposit down on a new car? That doesn't really... I've really never spoke that posh in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is your telephone voice. It's the <laughs> yeah, yeah, telephone voice. There's actually one that the actual whatever it is they use to do it the AI mm. couldn't do, which was <laughs> us. <laughs> so you say, let's I'm have sorry. a listen to what they did. Hello there, this is Janet Street Porter here and I've left my bank card at home. Could you please transfer me 10 grand so I can put a deposit down no. on a new car? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> AI no would believe not. that. You're I lucky though. Cloned. I yeah, can't be cloned, I'm a one off, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Genetically, that's reassuring. Possible to reassuring. replicate. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got a card here, and it's um, how to prevent <laughs> oh, voice yeah, that's scams. Cool. It says, be mindful of unexpected calls, even from people you know well. This is not to say you need to schedule every call, but it helps to at least email or text message ahead. Also, do not rely on caller ID, since that can be fake too. Yeah. For example, if you receive a call from someone claiming to represent your bank, hang up and oh, yeah. call the bank directly to confirm the call's legitimacy. It's a red flag if you are subjected to emotional manipulation and high-pressure tacti tactics. If you feel compelled to help in these situations, hang up and independently call back the contact using a known phone number. Be careful with your personal information. Mind, I've had these... I've had two discussions. One was in the chemist when I was going to get my prescription and there's three people behind me and they go, address? And I said, I'm not giving my address verbally in front of three, three, three people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They always do that before you get your tablet. I always ask to write it down. I yeah, think that's, that's what good I've advice doing if now. you get asked any of those personal details. Say, give me a bit of paper and I'll write it down. And the other thing is to banks, they ring you and then they say, can you answer these questions? It's like, no, you rang me. <laughs> Stop <laughs> asking me this information. <laughs> <laughs> a bit angry today, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> I preferred your AI voice. <laughs>